So the other day a buddy and I were talking about some of our favorite Pokemon when the topic of starter Pokemon came up and we both came to the decision that the Gen 8 starters had been dog water. Ab absolute garbage. So now hold up, hold up. I can see some of you Galar White Knights greasing up your keyboards. Let me explain. The base form of the Galar starters like Grookey were in my opinion some of the best starters we had in a while. I think they really showed a lot of potential, right? They showed a lot of promise. My main issue was with the final evolution. So all of them dog water. Actually, actually not Rillaboom. Rillaboom can stay, but I'm not a fan of human Pokemon, especially Inteleon and Cinderace. I think they're just way too humanoid. Inteleon looks like it has a leather fetish. Cinderace looks like a fursona. It just looks like a, I don't see how it's based off a footballer or soccer player, which is a shame because Rabu had a lot of potential, but I digress. What this conversation got me thinking was that in my humble opinion, because I'm a very humble guy, I thought I could do a better job at designing those evolutions. I would give Score Bunny and Sobble the justice they deserve. But here's the thing. I felt it would be weird to start all the way at Gen 8 for this. So I came to the decision that it would be fun to give redesigning all of the starters to try all of them so this is a disclaimer for all you gen 1 neckbeards that's right i i see you well bear how dare you even suggest that gen 1 starters need to be redesigned they set the foundation for the entire franchise they're perfect they're perfect in every single which way look 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 i'm not here saying that the gen 1 starters need to be redesigned i'm just saying you know take a little crack at it would be you know kind of cool all right so i'm stalling too much and this intro is probably too long already so let's just hop into it so obviously we got to start the series off where it all began mr bulbasaur mr 101 one. I had a lot of ideas when it came to redesigning Bulbasaur, but before I started drawing anything, I had to examine what this Bulbasaur was already doing. So we got to do some research into the origins of Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur is actually based on frogs, which I really like because looking at Bulbasaur, my first thought honestly isn't frogs. You can really see it in Venusaur, especially in the walking running animation they gave it in the Let's Go series. The specific frog it's based on is <laughs> Bezel Bufo. I, I don't know. It wasn't, it's a weird, this isn't some regular ass frog either. This is a prehistoric frog. It had names like Devil Frog, Frog from Hell. Fun fact, Bulbasaur was actually the last one of its evolution line to be designed. So they started with Venusaur and then they worked their way backwards. So if we were to break down Bulbasaur to its purest essence, what do we have? We have a frog and we have the bulb. <laughs> you can't have Bulbasaur without the bulb. I wanted to make it more apparent that Bulbasaur was based off of frogs, but wasn't sure how to get my point across. That's when I had my little light bulb moment. In case you missed out on a second grade education, you would know that frog Frogs also do a little bit of evolving themselves. Frogs actually start off as tadpoles. Uh, I know, fun fact. <laughs> There's a bunch of other frog Pokemon that like Poliwrath, Seismitoad, and they both had tadpole starter evolutions. So I thought it was kind of weird that Bulbasaur didn't. That's when I decided to start off Bulbasaur with a more tadpole design rather than a frog design. I went ahead and gave them the tadpole tail. So now I just needed to figure out how to work in the bulb. So what I ended up doing was I was work I worked in the bulbs with the fact that Bulbasaur is part poison type. I split up the bulbs into four smaller ones instead of a giant one that just grew out of its back and I filled it with poison seeds like poisonous seeds. Bulbasaur would walk around swamps and shed these bulbs to like mark their territory with the poisonous plants that would grow from them and to lean into the frog aspect even more I gave Bulbasaur these like frog cheeks that inflate and an inflatable like throat sack that they rivet with. I'm not gonna lie it took a little getting used to but I think I really like him the, the little guy the little guy grew on me what can I say. <laughs> I designed their color scheme not to be too far off from the original since I wanted something that could realistically camouflage in like a, sw a swampy terrain. For the shiny though I had another their big brain Albert Einstein moment since Bulbasaur is based off of frogs mainly poisonous ones I wanted the shiny to reflect that so you'll see it in it a little bit yeah so that's our new Bulbasaur what do you guys think obviously we can't compete against the OG Bulbasaur but I think we did a pretty decent job let me know what you guys thought Bulbasaur the seed Pokemon Bulbasaur primarily live in humid swampy terrains and enjoy basking in the muddy banks of rivers when they reach full maturity the bulbs on its back fall and will bloom into poisonous flowers these flowers mark its territory and ward off potential predators. Bulbasaur gains the ability Poison Point due to the slimy poisonous film that covers its entire body. It has the hidden ability of unaware to signify how much of a hardy and sturdy Pokemon Bulbasaur is. Man, Charmander. I saved this one for the middle since I know it's gonna get people the most riled up, I reckon. <laughs> Charmander is without a doubt the most popular of the three starters based on how much even Pokemon themselves dick ride them. I mean promote them. Um, like I get it too, it's a it's a baby dragon, come on. So I know how to take special care when designing this one. So if we just mosey on over to Bulbapedia, we can see that Charmander is actually originally based off of lizards and salamanders. More specifically, a type of salamander spirit that could use flames and stuff. So if we were to break down Charmander, again, we would see that its core components, its essence, in my opinion, are the flame tail and it's like dragon dinosaur appearance. So looking 
looking at the evolution, like the original evolution line, I'm finding it kind of difficult to see where the salamander inspiration comes in. So, so for my design, I decided to ditch the whole salamander aspect and instead do something that Charmander had coming for a while. We all know that Charizard is a fucking dragon, right? So why is it typed fire flying? Exactly, you know, I decided to fix it once and for all. So in case you didn't know, there's actually a bunch of different subspecies of dragons, different categorizations. So you have your more Western European dragons, you got your more Eastern Asian dragons, you got hydras, you got worms. So I decided... <laughs> I decided to switch up not just Charmander, but the entire line completely. Instead of being based off of traditional Western dragons like Charizard was with wings and everything, Charmander's based off of Drakes. On all, it's an all fours type of dragon, tiger looking thing. So for Charmander's new look, I made it walk on all fours instead of just two feet like the original. I also switched up the color palette on him by making it something a bit more like rustic, I wanna say. Something that shows this thing is a little like meaner, you know? I also switched up the eyes because for me, this Charmander is something more of like a cave dweller. I wanted to live inside a volcano and I want it to be able to like nest in caves and stuff. Think of like Garchomp maybe. So I tried to give it like these eyes that like a nocturnal vibe. I really wanted this Charmander to look like a predator. Of course I kept the tail of the original Charmander. That was just something I couldn't really picture changing without losing a lot of the soul of like the original design. The soul, you know. <laughs> you guys will see like that for the shiny form, I decided to keep it classy, you know. So choose something that went along with this like meaner, sleek predator Charmander kind of thing. I think you guys will like it. So let me know what you guys think about this one. Charmander, the Drake Pokemon. Charmander live inside of and on the outskirts of active volcanoes. They prefer craggy cliffs and dark caves to nest and hunt in. Its fire tail and night vision eyes have left it perfectly suited to hunt in the dark. When aggravated, Charmander are capable of drooling burning hot magma from its maw as well as being able to fling it from their tail. Charmander has the ability Intimidate. This is due to Charmander being an aggressive hunter that utilizes this ability to immobilize prey. It has the hidden ability of guts due to Charmander's being difficult to subdue by any means. Squirtle. I got a lot of opinions on not just Squirtle, but the whole line. To me, Squirtle, the Squirtle line was almost perfect. You know, solid pimp looking base starter. I mean, this dude ran a gang, a mob, and he got War Turtle. Then they just introduced these fluffy little ears and that tail. It's looking good. And then Blastoise. They just stuck water cannons on this thing and called it a day. Like, look, I know some of you are diehard Blastoise fans, and you got to admit that the cannons, they came out of left field when you really think about it. Like, Gen 1, water starter cannons, really? Like, that's why for me, the redesign, we're going to take this line in a whole new direction. I actually had the most trouble redesigning Squirtle because once you take away the shell and the cannon you really just have like another turtle Pokemon you don't have a lot so we already have a bunch so I was looking for as to what we could do to stand out a little I tried a bunch of different ways to redesign the shell I tried out different shell types different forms and nothing was really clicking that's when I decided that the shell didn't need to completely cover them instead I designed the shell to work more like a life jacket I also switched up the original tail instead of looking something so squirrel like I went with something more that looks like it could function a little bit more like efficiently in the water I guess uh, to move move faster. The biggest change in my opinion besides the shell was the arms. To really switch it up, I decided to give Squirtle's limbs, I decided to base Squirtle's limbs off of sea turtles. For me, uh, this Squirtle lives like on the shoreline of beaches, so I wanted the anatomy to reflect that. I also gave them a little fin on the head because fuck it, it looks, it looked cool. <laughs> Out of all the shinies, I think Squirtle looks the best. I based it off of dolphins and I wanted the shiny to really give off like these fruity tropical vibes and I think it really shows in the final result. So out of all three, I would say that Squirtle is probably the weakest one design wise because it was just difficult to find my footing but I think I came up with something that's definitely passable. Let me know what you guys saw. Squirtle, the tiny turtle Pokemon. Squirtle enjoy living on the shores of tropical beaches and spend their time playing and dancing with tourists. The most socially adapted of the three starters, Squirtle thrive in communities. Using its powerful fins and tail it is capable of reaching high speeds in the water. It is, however, quite clumsy on land. Squirtle has the ability strong jaw due to the powerful bite that most turtles have. It uses this ability in hunting its sturdy prey underwater such as Krabby and Staryu. It has the hidden ability of huge power due to its powerful jaw and the amount of damage it can cause when charging full speed underwater. Well that's it, the first batch of our starter redesign series. After this we're going to take a crack at redesigning the rest of the evolutions, then the rest of the gen starters. Let me know what you guys thought of the final designs, how'd I do? I'm not saying that they're just as good as the originals, but do they got a chance? You know, I'm, I'm thinking maybe Charmander's our heavy hitter, our first place guy, or you know, our gold trophy. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys liked the video and I hope you guys will be around for the next one. Thanks for watching.